Anne Jeffries as Marion Kirby, the ghostess with the mostess. Robert Sterling as George Kirby, that most sportive spirit. And Leo G. Carroll, host to said ghosts as... Topper. Kirby? My name isn't Kirby. It's Topper. Well, the Kirby's don't live here anymore. Yeah. I got orders to deliver it here. Why, Topper? We okay. do do live here. I said it. As soon as I get those suitcases in, I'm through for the day. But my name's Topper, I tell you. Hey, George, this is our trunk. It's the one we took to Sun Valley with us when we were killed. You sign for it. I'll see if anything is missing. Don't belong here. No? Well, who opened that? Well, somebody must have a key. Now, yeah, if you'll just sign here, Mr. Oh, it's already signed. Marion Kirby. <laughs> Your wife must have signed it while we were outside. Well, uh, Marion Kirby is not my wife. Well, it's signed. She must be here. Well, uh, yes, she, she's here, but um, well, she's not my wife. <laughs> I get it. Yes? How do you do, sir? My name's Jackson, Frederick Jackson, attorney of law. May I come in, sir? Well, uh, if it's a business call, I'd prefer that you came to the bank. Uh, my wife isn't feeling very well. No, I'll be brief, Mr. Kirby. Kirby? My name's Topper, Cosmo Topper. He's here to see us, George. Take his hat. Okay. So that. Yes, sir. I'd be glad to. But I don't even know how I did it. Well, the Kirby's don't live here. I bought this house. My name's Topper. Do you happen to know how I can get in touch with them? No, and you don't know how fortunate you are. They're dead. Been dead for nearly a year. Terribly sorry to hear that. And I apologize for disturbing you, Mr... Uh, Topper. Kirby? 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 Now, Mr. Kirby, just because I'm an attorney is no reason to give me a false name. My name is Topper. I represent the estate of your paternal grandfather, the late Augustus Kirby. Late? Uh, how late? Two months. We're late. Months late. Augustus Kirby was a wealthy man, a solitary man. He used to say, don't never spend one penny that ain't absolutely necessary. Well, his English wasn't very good. Sir, I'm a Harvard man myself, but since I started handling his million dollars, I ain't had no objection to his English. Did you say million? Did you say a million? A million, give or take a hundred thousand. To be brief, he has left the entire estate to you and your wife, George and Marion Kirby. George, we're rich. I don't think I can stand the shock. Let's get a drink quick. Augustus Kirby obviously hadn't heard the news. George and Marion were killed in a skiing accident. The, an avalanche hit them. What? Their bodies were never recovered. They really did. Are you sure? Well, I have no proof. But after a year under two or three million tons of ice, well, one uh, suspects the worst. I'm frightfully distressed. I must have proof of the death, because under the terms of the legacy, in the event of their demise, the money goes to charity. Mr. Topper, I'm extremely sorry to have intruded on you like this. Oh, not at all. Uh, drop in any time you have another million dollars. A million dollars. A million dollars? Well, give or take a hundred thousand. You give, I'll take. Tell you what I'll do, Topper. <clears throat> I'll buy Henrietta a brand new antique vase. And I'll buy her a black lace nightgown, just like mine. Seems to me you might have some feeling for your grandfather, Augustus. But well, we never knew him. He was a, a recluse. We just hope he finds someone as nice to haunt as you. Uh, it's very touching. But before you spend that inheritance, may I remind you both that you're every bit as deceased as Augustus? You and your skiing vacation. If you'd have gone to Florida like I wanted to, we'd have been alive to spend that money. Well, let's look on the bright side, honey. 
If we'd have gone to Florida, we might have been drowned. It's all your fault. Throwing away my million dollars. Just like a man. You don't care what happens to your wife. You, you kill her and cheat her out of her rightful inheritance and... George, I won't speak to you about Marion. I know, I know. This is just a lover's quarrel. You've got to do something about her. There are a lot of things I'd like to do, but they won't work. She's already dead. Well, that's not a nice thing to say, even in jest. You know, you love your wife just as much as I do. You're in love with my wife? No, no, I love Henrietta. But there's a little poem you should always remember, George. The truest joys they seldom prove who free from quarrels live. Tis the most tender part of love for each other to forgive. Hello, uh, what are you muttering about? Oh, uh, the sight of you coming downstairs, dear, has inspired me to poetry. <laughs> I was uh, reciting to myself, Juliet is the sun. See how she leans her hand upon her cheek. Oh, that I were a glove upon that hand that I might touch that cheek. Cosmo, if you must do something with your hands, take that trunk and those suitcases out of the hall. They've been there since this morning. Oh, very well, dear. I'll help you, Topper. I'll take you down to the basement, Topper. Cosmo, that trunk sailed right out of the hall. Oh, you're mistaken, dear. That's a steamer trunk, not a sail on it. <laughs> No, that headache medicine of mine has alcoholic content. Are you sure you can handle this? Of course I can handle it. They don't call me the man with a thousand faces because I can't handle a little grease paint. And just remember all the details about the house. Now, here's some authentic identification I dug up for you. Birth certificate. Medical certificate. Okay. Now, remember, we've got a chance to make ourselves a million dollars. Why do we have to play it up for these copper people? For the same reason I called on them and had the Kirby luggage sent there. Everything has to look natural. Besides, this topper is the vice president of the bank. His identification will carry weight with the courts. Now, get in there and sell yourselves as the Kirby's. Contact me at the office later. All right. Mrs. Topper? Yes? How do you do? My name is Kirby. George Kirby. And uh, this is my wife, Marion. How do you do? Won't you come in? <laughs> Thank you. Oh! Kirby! Oh, you mustn't be alarmed, Mrs. Topper. We're not ghosts. But you said you were George and Mary and Kirby. Yes, we are. Oh, uh, we were reported dead. As a matter of fact, uh, we had a very serious skiing accident, and we've been recuperating in a small and rather remote hospital. Uh, you see, we owned this house before you did, and our hospital bills were so heavy that we couldn't keep up the payments, so we had to let it go by default. We, uh, we just came by to pick up our baggage. It was sent to our old address by mistake. It's a beautiful house. Uh, only you've made it so much more attractive than I did. Oh, you really think it's attractive? Oh, Charlie. Oh, do come up and see how I've decorated the bedroom. The drapery is hand-locked linen. And you don't mind, do you, Mr. Kirby? Oh, not at all, not at all. I've done the guest room over completely and built an extra closet for Mr. Topper's papers. He brings home a lot of stuff from the bank. Thank you, George. Clear off that shelf and I'll bring the suitcases down to the basement. I thought you were down in the basement. Oh, take off that silly moustache. Ow! Well, oh, it's no sillier than yours. Oh! Uh, I'll go get George. I want to show him how you've redecorated things. Marion, what have you done to your hair? And how did George raise a moustache? Oh, you must be Mr. Topper. Hello. Well, never mind that hello. What's going on here? Those are Henrietta's clothes you're wearing. Take off that hat. I beg your pardon? Well, take off those clothes. <laughs> What happened? 
What held you up with the suitcases? Where, where's your mustache? What mustache? What? George, you remember when you said you had a feeling something strange was going to happen? Yeah, bumps went down my spine. My spine just went down the bumps. George, it's happened. Met my husband, Mr. Topper, yet, have you? Not formally. He just stepped up to me and pulled on my mustache. Oh, dear. H have you met him, Mrs. Kirby? Uh, not socially. He just told me to take off my clothes. But I had shoplifted them. I think there's something I ought to explain about my husband. He has a little uh, eccentricity. He thinks he's haunted. Haunted? By whom? By you. Well, uh, dear, I guess we'd better be getting back to the hotel. He claims that he's the only one that can see or hear you. But he's harmless. Katie, that's enough of that. I'm sorry. Well, uh, uh, thank you very much for the tea. Yes, we really must go. Immaterial eyes, vanish. Dick, the pleasure yourselves. Cosmo has no way to speak to our guests. These are George and Mary and Kirby. Henrietta, you can see them too. Why, of course. I can see them too. Katie. Good heavens. George. George, you're... You're flesh and blood. <laughs> you're, you're all there, too. Cosmo, the Kirby's are not dead. They were injured in a skiing accident and have been in the hospital. We, uh, we had a very close call. For a while it was touch and go. Touch and go? Well, maybe when you went, you came here. And now that you're here, you're gone. <clears throat> yes, sir. Uh, a brilliant explanation of psychic phenomena, Mr. Topper. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll see about our bags and call a cab. I won't you sit down and wait for him, Mrs. Kirby. George. 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 All right, so you're still not speaking to me. I'm willing to say I'm sorry, even though it was all your fault. <laughs> Stopper was right. That's a very ridiculous mustache. Uh, but I love you. you're satisfied. You know you're not haunted. You don't see two people. Uh, no, dear. Good. No, I see four. <laughs> Come on, Topper. We've got to see you in the other room. Uh, oh, will you excuse me? Don't talk. Anything you say might be used in court. George, put your hand over his mouth. Hey, hey. Oh, what's the idea? What's the What? Hey, Topper, those what? people aren't us. They're perfect strangers. Incredible. Imposters. Well, why should anybody want to be us? And we don't even want to be ourselves. I have it. The legacy. Grandpa Augustus. They're phonies. They're just trying to collect our money. You've got to expose them, Topper. Go back in there and ask them for some sort of identification. Come on, dear. We must really go. Uh, it's not a fair of mine, of course, but... Um, after all, the Kerbers were reported dead. I suppose you have some identification? Why, certainly. Here's my passport. The hospital bill where we were confined. 
And my driver's license. Hmm. That's all in order. This driver's license has your thumbprint on it. Uh, excuse me. Uh, would you mind? Uh, your thumb. Hmm. Oh, that proves it conclusively. Proves what? But I don't know a thing about fingerprints. Ask them where the wall safe is. Um, in as much as you lived here, I take it you know where the wall safe is? Of course. Now, uh, open it. I can't. You caught him, Topper. You admit you don't know the combination? Of course he doesn't. We had it changed when we moved in here. Oh, yes. Uh, if there's any further doubt, Mr. Topper, I have my birth and medical certificate. Here are mine. Uh, we always carry them with us when we travel. How do you like that? They've really got our birth and medical certificates. Well, are you satisfied, Mr. Topper? Yes. You're Marion Kirby. And you're George Kirby. But who are those? Who is who? Those two ghosts. Oh, Cosmo, you were making such wonderful progress. And now you're back to the two ghosts. Pardon me. Uh, if we could use your telephone again, Mrs. Topper, I'd like to try again for a cab. Right this way, in my bedroom. Topper, you're not going to let him get away with that, are you? I don't know you. And I'm beginning to wonder who I am. Topper, they're crooks. They're after that inheritance. You want the money to go to the proper charities, don't you? Uh, yes, I do. But they were so much like you. But they were actors. I don't know. His driver's license had his thumbprint. A fraud wouldn't take a chance like that. Well, of course it was his own thumbprint. It was a new license. But they made one little mistake using Marion's medical certificate. But it was perfectly authentic. Oh, yes, it was authentic. But you uh, overlooked one little detail. It clearly stated that Marion had a mole on her body. Where? George, that's a very personal matter. Well, where, where is it? Well, it... George, don't you say another word. If I'm going to do anything about it, I have to know where it is. I'd die before I'd show it to you. You're already dead. Where is it? It's on her leg, one inch above her knee. Show him, Marion. I will not. But, honey, this is for charity. It's a very small mole, and I won't show it to anyone. Okay, okay. Topper, will you believe that other girl isn't Marion if I can prove that she doesn't have a mole on her leg? Yes, but I'm interested to know how you're going to find out. Simple. I'll uh, just swipe her skirt from her. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. I'll do it. But, darling, these are dangerous criminals that we're dealing with. It's a man's duty to have courage and, and face danger. I'll do it. If you do, it'll take a lot more courage to face me. I'll do it. Here it is, Topper. Cosmo! Cosmo, hmm? the most amazing thing just happened. Mrs. Kirby was on the telephone, and suddenly part of her clothes... Cosmo, what have you to say? Uh, nothing. Uh, I'm skirting the issue. I'll take it back upstairs, Topper. Cosmo, that skirt, it went right up by itself. Well, of course it went up. Paris has lifted the hemline again. <laughs> The court has made its decision. The will of the late Augustus Kirby leaves everything to the beneficiaries here, George and Marion Kirby. Not now, Topper. Don't object yet. I'll tell you when. Although there were rumors that they'd been killed in an avalanche, they proved to be very much alive. Not yet. Cosmo, why do you keep standing up? Well, uh, to see better, dear. It's a very high court. They have given me conclusive evidence of their identity. Uh, before the court awards the estate to the beneficiaries, does anyone uh, wish to register any objection? Now's the time, Topper. Object. I object, Your Honor. What is the nature of your objection, Mr. Topper? Well, the money should go to charity. These people are imposters. The real Kirby's are dead. You have proof that they're dead? Absolutely. 
They haunt my house. For heaven's sakes, Topper, stay off of that subject. They'll think you're crazy. Get to the mole. A court of law will need a little more proof than that, Mr. Topper. Well, the medical report before you says that Marion Kirby has, or had, a mole on her leg, above the knee. Yes, it does say that. A mole an inch above the knee. Your Honor, ladies and gentlemen, that woman has no such mole. Don't worry, Topper. I'll take it from here. <laughs> the court. No more. I can see it pleases the court. It says here that the money was turned over to charity after Cosmo Topper exposed the couple as professional actors. Exposed is right. I never saw such exposure. Uh, I read it, dear. The attorney has been disbarred and faces a prison term. So do those two actors. Cosmo, how did you know about that mole on Marion Kirby's leg? Well, it, it was on the medical certificate. Yes, but how did you know that other woman didn't have a mole? If I could think of an answer to that question, my dear, I'd win the Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> W. Lupton, Bernard L. Schubert Production. Produced by John W. Lupton. Starring Anne Jeffries, Robert Sterling, and Leo G. Carroll.